The Columbus Blue Jackets had a year from hell even before the first puck drop of the season. They were a team in clear turmoil throughout the year and made numerous changes before they were even officially eliminated from the playoffs. But now that their playoff hopes are dead and buried, what exactly went wrong in the 2023-24 season for the Columbus Blue Jackets? Pascal Vincent was not supposed to be here and in fact he's had the look all season of the guy who was not supposed to be here. Mike Babcock was supposed to be the bench boss for the Columbus Blue Jackets, but he didn't even make it into the season before getting fired because he wanted to keep closer tabs on his players than the NSA. And so for that reason, it's hard for me to lay the entirety or even the majority of the Columbus Blue Jackets failings this year on his feet because he's in a job he wasn't supposed to be. But Vincent wasn't exactly unqualified for this role. He's been an assistant in the NHL for a few years now, so... It is fair to hold up the Blue Jackets' performance and compare it to the rest of the NHL to see how effective a coach he's been this year, even if it's not a role he was supposed to be in. And to my eye, I think Vincent's actually done a pretty decent job for the Blue Jackets. They're one of the least penalized teams in the NHL on the year, and they're one of the better first period teams in the NHL, which is very surprising given how bad they've been overall. His big problem, though, is just in making adjustments. The Blue Jackets are one of the worst third period teams in the entire NHL in terms of goal differential, and they're also one of the worst teams in the NHL when it comes to their record when leading after the first or second period. They give up leads very often, so that just indicates to me that he doesn't have a good grasp of how to adjust his strategy in between periods and respond to what the other team is doing. But again, given the circumstances, I think that Vincent's done a pretty admirable job for the Blue Jackets. Listen up, Fives. A 10 is speaking. The Columbus Blue Jackets don't have a superstar. They have a lot of very good parts, but no one player who's really changing the game. If I was to say anybody is a star of the Blue Jackets, it would probably be defenseman Zach Wierenski. And Wierenski had a really good season. He was above 50% in Corsi 4 and was one of their best players in terms of Corsi 4 rel. Johnny Gaudreau, their big acquisition last offseason, had a really good year leading the team in points and was their best player in terms of Corsi 4 and, and relative expected goal percentage. But no player on the team cracked 70 points on the year and only two, Kirill Marchenko and Boone Jenner, cracked 20 goals. At the end of the day, I don't think any of the Blue Jackets' star players underperformed. They just simply don't have a star player that they can rely on. The Columbus Blue Jackets actually played with five goaltenders on the year so far, including guys like Malcolm Subban and Jet Greaves. But Elvis Merzlikens was expected to be their starting goaltender going into this year, and he had a pretty pitiful performance, if we're being honest. With a save percentage under 90 and a GAA of almost 3.5, Merzlikens posted only a slight rebound from the disaster that was his 22-23 season. And it's not like those numbers can be attributed to the Columbus Blue Jackets' poorest defense, as he had a negative 6.3 goals saved above expected on the season, meaning he gave up about 6 more goals than he should have. Backups to Neil Tarasov and Spencer Martin were fine, but nothing to write home about. It's really hard to say that these goaltenders held back this poor defense in front of them, but it's also hard to say that this poor defense is the reason all underperformed so badly. The Columbus Blue Jackets were actually close to the top in terms of man games lost due to injury, and they did lose some pretty significant pieces for extended periods of time. The biggest, of course, was rookie Adam Pantilli, who missed 27 games with a leg injury. But they also lost Jack Roslovic, Patrick Laine, Kent Johnson, and Sean Corrali for about 20 games over the course of the year. Wierenski, Damon Severson, Igor Chenikov, and Boone Jenner also missed double-digit games on the year. Again, it's not like they suffered one big injury to a key player, but they were nicked up throughout the year, and a team that just wasn't that talented to begin with just couldn't survive the attrition. You think he's a damn special? I, I, I don't think I'm special. <laughs> My mother always said I'm not special. It's not surprising that the Columbus Blue Jackets were one of the worst teams on the power play in the NHL this season because they just didn't have any weapons that they could use on the power play. But they were also pretty bad on the penalty kill, which is probably just because they couldn't get enough practice on it in games. And the not being good on the penalty kill, considering how much they've invested into their defense, is a little bit surprising and disappointing, but their PK wasn't so bad that it cost them a ton of games. At even strength, the Columbus Blue Jackets were the fourth worst team in the NHL in terms of expected goals percentage. What's surprising though is that their core C4 was 10th worst at even strength, suggesting that they got a lot of volume of shots on net, but they just didn't have high quality chances. 
And the Jackets were one of the better finishing teams in the NHL with the 12th highest shooting percentage of any team in the NHL and even strength. That's why their goal differential above expected was one of the highest in the NHL at 5 on 5 as well. In short, the Columbus Blue Jackets' success, if you could call it that, at even strength was pretty unsustainable and probably won't be replicated next year. They desperately need to add players who can control the pace of the game rather than more skilled finishers because they clearly have those already. Don't make me fire you. You can't fire me. You're acting manager, not office manager, so you have no firing powers. Well, Yarmo Kekalainen got fired mid-season, so the Columbus Blue Jacks clearly believe that he sucked. President of Hockey Ops John Davidson assumed the role mid-season, and he basically did nothing through the trade deadline, so I'm assuming that they're just going to wait to hire somebody else in the offseason. But Yarmo Kekalainen's reign of incompetence has finally ended, and the Columbus Blue Jackets hopefully will either commit to a full rebuild or just push the chips in with the young players that they've already acquired. I actually thought that the Blue Jackets would be better this year. Not good, but just better and more competitive team. Better than the Flyers, I thought, at the beginning of the year. But whereas the Flyers' young talent has blossomed, the Blue Jackets has stagnated or been injured like Fantilli. Whereas the coach and GM of the Flyers clearly have a vision of how they want their organization to move forward, the Blue Jackets' vision is dysfunctional because of the firings of their coach before the season even began and their GM midway through the season. The Jackets are a team with a lot of talent and they're a pretty young team. They have a lot of upside. The problem is they just do not have the right people at the helm to manage it. Or rather, they have good people like Vincent, but they just don't have a cohesive plan to make the most of the talent that they have. Whereas teams like the Sharks or Ducks are desperate for a player like Macklin Celebrini to really give them a boost, I think with Macklin Celebrini, nothing would change for the Columbus Blue Jackets. They need to get the foundational pieces in place, that being in the management and hockey ops, and build out their cohesive vision for this organization if they want to have a chance to succeed. Johnson scores! It's a game! 